Yeah, that looks about right. Oh, g'day, didn't see that. I was just hanging out with my brand new Fivo merch. Now available in a hoodie and in a t-shirt. Grab yourself one today. Support the channel, twostepgarage.com. Let's go, Fivo. You. So I woke up this morning. Stuck my head outside, smelt the beautiful autumn air, and thought to myself, it's a good day to paint an engine bay. And here we are, Fevo baby. It is the last of the warm days of autumn. From tomorrow onwards, the weather is turning to absolute shit. And so today, I'm motivated. As you saw in the last video, we got the S13 strut tops done. We also started welding in the plates between our old and our new rails, and that is pretty much where we got to. So today, we're literally gonna continue on from where we left off. I have our plates cut and ready to be welded into our engine bay, and then we're gonna clean everything up. We're gonna wheel this thing outside, get the Datsun out of the way, and we're gonna paint this engine bay. I'm so excited. Before we kick into this, I will address a couple of your guys' comments. Someone did comment, sorry, I forgot who it was, and said these strut tops might not be strong enough. Now, they definitely are, I can promise you that. So, remember, we've gone into our old strut tops. That's these here, right? That's the stock part of the body as it was. Two bolt holes into that, and then we've welded a plate on top for our last bolt hole. That technically means that this setup will actually be much stronger than the stock setup that was in this car. So there is literally no chance of this ripping out of the body. I've also seam welded around all the joints as well. So this is actually stronger than it was when it was stock. I also want to throw a shout out to Greg who comments a lot on these videos. He's an engineer by the looks of things and he knows a lot of what he's talking about. And he said that the caster in the front of the car looks quite aggressive. Greg, you are right. The caster is quite aggressive, but we've done that on purpose. I have my friend Marcus who runs S13 front suspension in his S13, very competitive car. I've had him helping me along the way. I've sent him pictures and videos and stuff because he's going to be the one aligning this car and we on purpose have put aggressive caster because when you're drifting for example in this car we run about eight degrees of caster you want quite a lot of caster to get return steer uh, in the steering wheel so we've got the caster set as aggressive as possible with the top hats and we can dial that caster out with our adjustable caster arms but we'd rather have more now and then dial it out then have not enough and we, couldn't, we wouldn't be able to get the, the wheel forward because it's already so far forward in the front of the car. So we are taking all of that stuff into account, but I always appreciate your guys' comments. And I'm actually gonna read a few comments out for each video addressing the car. So if you've got anything to say about it at all, throw it in the comments below and I might read your comment out next video. But now, let's kick straight into this. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna weld these plates into the front of the car, tidy up the engine bay, uh, make sure all the tack welds are around the top of our gearbox. It'll be seam sealed, but it's gonna be seam sealed from inside the car. The same with the backing plates here as well. It'll be seam sealed from the other side. I like the look of the weld, so I'm gonna leave those as is. We'll prime over that and paint over that. So without further ado, let's get stuck into it. I've decided to go for more of a raw race car look with this engine bay, so we're leaving all of the spot welds exposed under the paint. I've blanked off all of the unused holes on the firewall. This is a requirement for all forms of racing and drifting as it stops any potential fire hazards from entering the cabin. I then finish up the fabric on our frame rails and weld the tabs onto our removable radiator support. Alright, a solid couple of hours later and quite a nice amount of fab work done and I think we're finished in the engine bay. So we've got our plates nicely welded in here. I also did the front radiator support so now it's able to be bolted on and removed and put back on which is awesome. I mean I'm over the moon if I'm honest with all that, it looks pretty insane considering where we started off with and this is definitely the most in-depth fab work I've ever done in my life on this whole car, so, but I'm enjoying it a lot. So now we're actually able to go ahead and clean up the engine bay. And then the exciting part comes because we get to put color on it. Now as for the color, we're keeping it fully stock. It's just gonna be the same silver in the car that it is out of the car. Now Mitsubishi don't do that. As you can see, this is like a matte silver. And they don't obviously don't clear the engine bays for whatever reason. What we're doing is we will lay the silver down. We obviously will put clear down, but you know we ain't just gonna leave it fully stuck. In true fashion to the channel, we've got to put some sparkle in the paint. The Gillac sparkle stuff, 
a super rad. It's the same as what we have on the engine bay of the Datsun. We have it on the engine bay of the E36, so it would be a shame not to put it in this engine bay. You lay this down with the can, just get it as much sparkle as you're kind of happy with, and then you clear the engine bay with the gun, and the thing absolutely pops. So we will spray it all silver, but then these bars here, we're actually going to mask the rest of the engine bay off at some point, and we'll spray the bars black all the way through and up here. Now the reason for that is because when you put the front bumper on, these bars, if they're silver, they stick out like a sore thumb uh, with the, you know, you can see because we have holes in the bumper for the intercooler piping and all that. You'll see these bars. I'm not about that noise. So when you spray them black, obviously they kind of disappear and they're much more stealth behind the front bumper, which is what you want. So let's pull the car out the front and we're going to wash the engine bay for probably the first time in many years. <laughs> is nice and clean we smashed it out super happy with it but unfortunately it is night time outside so I was hoping to get this primed up tonight but hey you cannot rush these things and that's the hard thing about making these videos and trying to get a lot of videos out but you don't want to rush stuff and do it bad or do it wrong you know what I mean so it's about finding that balance which is difficult but I am trying for you guys nonetheless this is where we're gonna have to leave it tonight but we'll come back Nice and bright in the morning, mask everything off, and we're gonna prime this thing, give it a couple of hours to dry, and we can paint it. So don't worry, we're gonna get it done tomorrow, which is freaking sick. I'm gonna go get some food. I'll see you in the morning. Yeah, yeah. at the shop and of course it's about to be a big darn storm. It is warm today but the weather's been just all over the place. Nonetheless we're gonna push through and we're gonna paint the bay because I'm me, I have no patience or oh, I have some patience but right now none and I want to get this done so we're pretty well ready to start prepping it so let's go ahead and get this thing ready to lay down some primer. Yeah. To mask up the bay, I use this hella cool plastic sheet that has masking tape on it, which makes life super easy. Just stick on and pull the sheet down. We'll be repainting the whole car in the near future, so overspray isn't a huge issue. Then we use a scotch pad to rough up the old paint and give the new primer something to stick to. Finally, we wipe down the whole engine bay with wax and grease remover and we're ready to paint. So we are ready to start mixing up some primer and spraying it down. <laughs> Look at that. Just want to make sure that none of this blows up in the wind and catches onto our fresh paint, which would be super annoying. Remember we are painted the rails black, so I've masked that stuff off. It's going to look super sharp and nice, I think, against the silver as well, which would be cool. So that'll be a satisfying thing to do later down the road. But right now, bah, that wind is picking up. We're still going to go ahead and spray the bay. So let's mix up our primer and go to town on it. So keen. She looks awesome, very happy with the way it went down and I actually managed to have a snack while the primer was drying. So now I'm feeling a little more energetic, I don't know if you can tell, but I'm feeling good now. Getting a little overspray on my lens, but I'm doing that for you guys. So if you can hit that subscribe button for me, then we're both doing something for each other. That would be amazing. How'd you like that little segue, eh? All right, now it's time to lay down the color. The light outside is fading, but we don't care. We don't care. Or as Keeper Reap would say, don't care. Don't care. Don't care. That is amazing. It's flashed off, it's dried, and it's time to lay down our base coat. I was on the edge of thinking maybe we wouldn't get the engine base sprayed today, but we'll push through, we'll persevere. Silver, let's go. Guys, Woo. 
Not so bad if I do say so myself. This is what happens when you take all of the time to do the prep work and uh, the paint lays down nicely. So it's flashed off now and we can lay down our sparkle. Honestly, I think it looks pretty good, just like silver. I'm tempted to not put any sparkle in it, but nope, we're gonna put sparkle because that's what we do. Thumb spray, of course, always. All right, so we'll lay some down here, yeah? So instantly you can see the sparkle. Ooh. So it is now the next day, we've given the paint a chance to dry, and I'm pumped. It looks so damn good. Look how fresh this looks. She's shiny as hell, sparkly as hell, and just looks awesome. So I am over the moon with the result. Clearly it was never meant to be a show car, but at the same time, it's nice that it looks fully fresh and good to go. And since I have some time on my hands today, I was gonna end the video there. Who knows, I'll keep going. So we'll pull all the masking off now and we'll go ahead and start putting some stuff back into the engine bay because then you start to get a real sense of like how good it's all gonna look once it's all finished. Even doing little things like peeling off the masking is so satisfying. Oof. So let's go ahead, fit the coilovers back up and start, we'll pull all the masking off and then start bolting some stuff back on to the firewall. As we remove the masking material and start to fit things back into the engine bay, you can really get a sense of just how good this thing is going to look when it's all complete. All of those hours, blood, sweat, and tears of prep work really become worth it, and I honestly couldn't be happier with the result. As soon as you start bolting things up, oof, it starts to look spicy. Jesse, I'm looking at you, spicy. I wasn't expecting to do this today, but we're gonna put the radiator, well, we're gonna install the radiator. So here we have a brand spanking new radiator. Let's get it out of the box. So this is an eBay unit. Man, it's crazy what you can buy for like $220 these days, but, uh, but we're gonna install this shiny new radiator in the front of our car. So, so we're gonna make up plates. We'll measure it up. The plates are gonna weld to this bar right here. Then it'll slot in and then we can rib nut our mounts to our nice, shiny, new, removable radiator support. We begin by test fitting the radiator and taking measurements for our mounting tabs. I somehow coerced Woz into making the tabs for me, so that was a massive win. I reused some old BMW rubber radiator grommets we had lying around and the end result was pretty nice. Once we weld in the tabs, I unwrapped our brand new radiator and test fitted it again so we can fit our top mounting tabs. Here's some I prepared earlier. I used rib nuts for the top tabs to keep everything looking nice and clean. I bolted up the tabs for the final time and just look at that, bloody stunning. Great success. So happy with how that turned out. We have a radiator fitted in the car. Super nice and sturdy. Super happy with how it looks. You can start to see now like everything coming together and it just looks so fresh and so clean. I cannot wait to spray all these rails and everything black. What I'm gonna do down here as well is like I'm gonna round them off and then weld a plate in as well so that they look like the stock ones because the stock ones were round like that. I think this little like box section at the end here just makes it look a little bit too strange and aggressive. Of course we need to plate everything off and finish the fab work on that. But look at that, like that looks so damn good. Once we get that CA in the engine bay, all nice and refreshed and painted with this bay, it's gonna look crazy. Now I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I thought the exposed spot weld look would be Cool, that's why I wanted to leave it exposed. Now that I'm looking at it, I think maybe I should have grabbed them down, seam sealed them and painted it. But it is what it is, you know, I wanted to try this look. I'm still happy with it, I think it looks amazing. Overall, it looks very, very cool, but I think maybe it will look slightly tidier if we'd have seam sealed that off, but it's all good. Of course, once the engine's in there and stuff, it's just gonna look awesome. Ah, it looks so good, we've made some amazing progress. This thing is progressing so quickly and I couldn't be happier. That is where we'll wrap up this video. Don't forget guys, grab yourself some Fivo merch. It really helps support the channel and keep this build rolling as well as everything else. 
Next weekend we have Battle Royale round two in the E36, so literally as soon as we stop filming now, I'm about to get to work preparing this thing for that day. I'll be filming, of course, very excited about that. So if you're in Melbourne, come down 5th of May, Friday, it's gonna be sick. A lot of good drivers, Chelsea Denofa, it's gonna be freaking awesome. Uh, but as always, thank you guys so much for watching these videos. If you enjoyed it, remember to hit that like button, subscribe, throw us a comment below, let me know what you're thinking of the build, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you again, guys. You Cheers. Sparkly Fevo, woo! Bye, peace.